no wine expert, but that looks like a lovely grape. Yes, Ion has its eye on a curious feast for the senses. Four nights, 100 lucky diners are going to have their culinary curiosity satisfied. They're going to have the taste buds tickled, all courtesy of Brancott Estate. Brancott Estate is a pioneering wine brand from New Zealand. They were the first to plant the Sauvignon Blanc grape. Um, everyone thought they were totally ridiculous. They haven't got the weather conditions. Um, they planted the first grapes from back to front. Um, our winemaker, Jamie Marfell, was over a few weeks ago. He was nine when they started planting the grape and everyone in the village was like, what are they doing? They're total idiots. But look now, they're the pioneer wine brand and there's so many more Sauvignon Blancs come out of New Zealand because of it. So I suppose the whole reason about this event is Brankel Estate, um, it opens your mind, it uh, kind of uh, put things together that shouldn't go together and that's really what the event is about. How important is wine to go uh, with food? I know it's a really wide open question but for you yeah. uh, being in the industry. Uh, well it's all about getting the right food with the right wine um, and I think if you really pair the food perfectly with the wine you can really get the essence of the wine, talk about the nose and the palate and really just the taste of it all together, it really brings it out so very very important to get the right food with the right wine and Brancat Estate wines go excellent with all the food here tonight. Is it Collie and Sully or is Sully and Collie? What have we got here? Sully, Collie, Collie and Sully. Okay, so can we have Collie here, please? Okay, because that's how Anton Deck do it. That's how Jedward do it. That's how all twosomes should do it, all right? So, lads, uh, what have you got planned for us this evening? It's all about having a bit of fun, really. But it's about, you know, mixing wine with food. It's about sort of mixing interesting particles, bits of sort of molecular gastronomy nearly at this stage. It's about really pushing it out there when it comes to food, and then it's about trying to match that with wine. Uh, Solly, what, what's the strangest thing you guys have created together? You must be, your, your kitchen must be like a lab. The strangest thing we've ever created together, wow. Um, we've eaten a lot of things, we've tasted a lot of things. Carrots from Israel were the most, were the weirdest thing I think we ever, eat, we ever ate. They, they tasted like fish. Carrots that tasted like fish. Carrots from Israel, grown in the sand, do you think? We reckon, we, you know, we taste carrots from all over the world because we wanted to work out where was the best carrot from. And we got this. As you do. From, as you do, yeah. <laughs> and we, we couldn't figure these things out because we ate them. We blind, you know, ate them blindfolded as people would be doing this evening. And fish is what we all thought. Think fantasy. <laughs> dragon. Fire. A dragon man. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> it's really interesting actually if you're when you know when you taste something and you really think about it you can actually get very different things and there's a lot of flavors that you know if you taste a carrot and you really taste it like we've all got a sort of an imagine a flavor of carrot but actually if you start tasting all the carrots you eat they've got quite different flavors Say go. Carrot. 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 We obviously eat with our eyes, okay? How, how open are the Irish to wild ingredients? Now, we all like potatoes, you can't get more plain than that, but, what's the, but what wild things would you think we'd, be, we'd embrace? Things like we need to be eating way more oysters, we need to be eating way more of our natural seafoods and our natural products that we grow here. So scorpion baguettes at the latest, uh, at the nearest topaz, I can't wait for that. You did something out there that was very strange. It was like some kind of potato clonic or some kind of uh, spud bong or something. Yeah. Uh, what, what's all that with, with the smoking? Yeah, it's, uh, the smoking is uh, mashed potato. Just infusing the, the smoke, the flavour of smoke through it. Uh, at this day and age you can buy different wood chips from uh, cider barrels, wine barrels and stuff like that. So we just went with the old traditional smoke, uh, oak smoke. Uh, and it just infuses into the potato and it gives a lovely subtle flavour with the beef, the snails and the pepperness of the watercress. The dish really works well together, especially with the Pinot Noir from Brancot. And what kind of inspired your menu? You could do whatever you want, you could go out there and do Heston Blumenthal stuff, and, but when you actually come to service it's going to be very difficult to get out for those people. So just looked at what we had and what we do in the restaurant and we did everything as good as we possibly could. Overall, both of us are very happy and I'd like to say a nice thank you to the whole team at Rock's Browser. Um, everyone put in a bit of work through the whole thing. And That's which, yeah. But we're, we're happy with the result and I hope they're happy, you know. I think if you seen it in the menu you wouldn't necessarily take it. However, when somebody else is making it like this, and it's absolutely lovely. Oh, I saw you throw yourself into the snails there as well. How are they? They're absolutely delicious. I haven't had snails before actually. So uh, yeah, no, really nice. They were serving up snails. Did, did you munch down? 
I didn't, he did. Cheers. <laughs> Delicious. You're, you're a snail man. Big time, big time, love uh, Now, guys in the main was uh, Beef Cheek. You don't normally see Beef Cheek uh, floating around, but like uh, everyone just ravaged it down. It was amazing. That's excellent. It's delicious. Really, really good. Yeah. At last supper, what would you have? You, know, you always go back to the basic. It's like mummy's roast chicken. It's my mother's brown soda bread. It's always that. I, I, that and that's where I go. It's roast chicken, brown soda, and yourself, Chips Sally. And Bernays. Chips and Bernays. <laughs> and obviously washed down with a nice brown cottage steak. <laughs> Follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash entertainment.ie and on Twitter at entertainment.ie.